This video discusses how to build a safety instrument function with Safeguard Profiler. First, insert a new SIF loop. Click Edit and then select Insert New Loop. In the window that appears, select SIF and click OK. You start on the event screen, but we want to do a SIL validation, so click SIL Validation. We're going to start building the SIF now. To start with designing the sensor, click Sensor Data. We're going to insert a voting block by clicking Add Block. We can now choose what voting configuration we want from anything in the dropdown. I'm going to choose one out of two. We now have to add elements to the voting block. To do so, click Add Element. We can now start entering our information, like tag number and a description for the pressure sensor. Now we can enter our reliability variables like failure rate, dangerous failure fraction, mean time to restoration, test interval, test coverage, and diagnostic coverage. Our first pressure sensor is done, but to add the second pressure sensor within our voting group, we're going to click on the top level block and again click Add Element. For this pressure sensor, we're not going to manually enter the information, we're going to get it from the failure rate database. Click on the element and click Failure Data. The window that appears includes all of the data from the built-in failure rate database. We're going to select the first pressure sensor and then select the information we'd like to use below. Clicking OK automatically fills in this information. Our 102 voting block is done and we can see that Safeguard Profiler has calculated the PFD for that block. Now we need to do the same thing for the logic solver. Click on the logic solver and add a block for 101 voting. Our vendor has told us the PFD of the logic solver, so we're going to click Manual PFD and enter the value that they gave us. Finally, we're going to work on the SIF valves. Click Final Element and add a block. We're going to create a relatively complicated subsystem here of voting within voting. First, we're going to select the top level voting of one out of two. Next, we're going to put in our lower level voting which is going to be 2 out of 2, representing an actuator and a valve. Add two elements to the subblock. Once this is done, we're going to insert failure rate data using the built-in database. Select the actuator and the failure rate data, click OK, and repeat for the valve. For the additional final element voting block, I'm going to copy the subblock I just created. Select the block and then right-click on the line. Click Copy, and then select the top level voting block. Right clicking will allow you to paste the data, and it will show up immediately. The initial design of the SIF is done, although we can see that the current design does not even meet a SIL-1 rating. For more information on optimizing a SIF for higher reliability, see the video, How to Optimize SIFs. To view a visual representation of the reliability block diagram, click View, and then select Block Diagram and Summary. The window that appears shows us how our voting systems interact, including the subvoting of the final element. This reliability block diagram will show up in the safety requirement specification. For more information on SRSs, watch the video Building a Safety Requirement Specification.